physical properties of minerals. Objectives The aim of this lesson is to introduce the importance of physical properties of minerals. The following are the objectives of learning this module. Importance of physical properties Various physical properties to understand the identification of minerals followed by conclusions. After attending this module, the learner will be able to understand about the importance of physical properties in the identification of minerals. Mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic substance having definite chemical composition and ordered internal atomic structure. The physical properties of minerals are used by mineralogists to help determine the identity of a specimen. Some of the tests can be performed easily in the field, while others require laboratory equipment. However, there exist whole lot of physical properties that are helpful in diagnosis of a mineral. In the foregoing paragraphs, the physical properties of minerals are discussed. Minerals have distinguishing physical properties that in most cases can be used to determine the identity of the mineral. The physical characteristics of minerals include traits which are used to identify and describe mineral species. These traits include color, streak, luster, density, hardness, cleavage, fracture, tenacity and crystal habit. Each mineral is characterized by a set of physical properties that assists in its identification. External shape, form, habit, weak planes, hardness and tenacity, specific gravity, color, diaphanity and luster are some of the important physical properties of the minerals. Color, however, is variable and is dependent on impurity and other factors. Diaphanity is an important property which qualifies a mineral to be cleaned as a gemstone. Unusual properties like incandescence and chatoyancy are characteristics of some minerals which elevate them to the level of gemstone. Properties like luminescence and those based on magnetism and electricity help in distinguishing certain stones. A few minerals have characteristic odor, taste and affinity to water and grease. Synthetic stones have physical properties analog to their natural counterparts. Man-made stones that are not represented in nature also have their own distinct physical properties. Crystal habit External form or habit helps in identifying a mineral. Even in a fragmented piece, where an original crystal surface is preserved, helps in recognizing its habit. Habit can also be deduced even when it is water-worn as in a pebble. Early formed minerals, olivine or rocks like dunite, have well-developed crystal faces. Fine crystals are common in pegmatites as well as in vugs and geodes. In metamorphic rocks, most gem minerals such as corundum and garnet have strong power of crystallization and occur as idioblastic crystals. The more important crystal habits are Equant or equidimensional habit is characteristic of minerals crystallizing in isometric or cubic system. Diamond, spinel and garnet are some of the important isometric gem minerals commonly occurring in the form of octahedron, dodecahedron, and trapezohedron. Some minerals belonging to other crystal systems may also have more or less equidimensional shape. Example, stubby crystals of olivine. Prismatic or elongated habit. This habit is the most commonly found habit in minerals, other than isometric. Such minerals are usually elongate in other directions, example, epidote, which is elongated parallel to B direction. Prismatic habit is a characteristic of gem minerals like tourmaline, beryl, quartz and topaz. 
In several cases, prismatic crystals terminate with pyramidal faces, example zircon, apophyllite, and quartz. Often, second-order dipyramids pyramids make such crystals appear like barrels. Prismatic crystals may develop stout column shape, columnar. The extensive elongation may result in needle-like shape, acicular, and hair-like, filiform, and thread-like, fibrous habit. Needles may radiate from a center, radiation, or appear like star, stellated. Tabular or flattened habit is often found in minerals like feldspar, bayrite where crystals are flattened parallel to certain pinacoids. Minerals having prominent cleavage may even break into flattened fragments, example feldspar and calcite. More commonly, feldspars occur in the form of blocks, blocky. Highly flattened forms occur bladed, lamellar or platy habit, as in kyanite. Some minerals occur in extremely thin sheets, as in mica and talc, foliated. Rose petal-like aggregates of platy crystals, rosette habit, is often seen in hematite, iron rose, and gypsum, desert rose bundles of platy crystals in styobite, usually resemble a bow tie, sheaf lila. The rosettes and sheaves form base for exhibiting gemstones. Apart from equant, prismatic, and flattened shapes, other habits may also exist in crypto crystalline minerals like chalcedony. They may have the outward appearance of a bunch of grapes, botryoidal, mammillary glands, mammillary, kidney shape, reniform, or test as globules, globular. They may also grow in the form of a cone hanging from a substitution, stalactitic. Fibrous hematite, malachite, and goethite frequently exhibit mud forms. When cryptocrystalline material occurs in bands of various shades, it is called banded, as in agate and malachite. Often, minerals grow in concentric layers, concretionary, pea-sized spherical bodies, pisolytic, or much smaller spherical grains, oolitic. Such forms may be sometimes, such forms may be sometimes silicified and appear very attractive when polished. Crystals deposited by mineralizing fluids project from the walls of veins and other surfaces of various sizes and shapes, drusi. Partially filled, more or less spherical cavities, geode, are much sought after by collectors. Mineralized veins, geodes, as well as cavities that resemble an almond, amygdaloidal or other shapes, nodular, are common in Deccan traps. Detached void geodes or amygdales are often called as potato stones. Color. One of the most enhancing properties of the mineral kingdom is color. Colored substances absorb certain parts of visible spectrum and the resultant color is a combination of unabsorbed part of the spectrum. Rubies absorb a greater part of green, violet and yellow and transmit red and a small portion of blue. As a result, it appears red with a purplish hue. Only recently, causes for color variation have been scientifically understood, largely due to the work of Kurt Nassau of Bell Laboratory, New Jersey, USA. Kurt lists as many as 15 categories of causes for the color. Perception of color also depends on the sensitivity of the human eye. In emerald, along with green, some amount of red is also transmitted. Our eye, however, being more sensitive to green, ignores red color. With the help of certain filters, such as Chelsea filter, transmission of red by emerald can be detected. Chromophores Minerals are colorless when they are in pure form. Presence of only certain elements is responsible for color in minerals. Such specific coloring elements are called chromophores, color containing. When chromophoric element forms the essential constituent, the mineral is called idiochromatic. Self-colored, idio means inherent, 
and if it forms impurity replacing essential constituents the mineral is termed as allochromatic other color the term pseudochromatic false colored is used when the color is caused by the physical optical effects like iridescence and opalescence elements that are responsible for color are the transition elements copper chromium manganese iron nickel and vanadium these transition elements are characterized by partially filled electrons in the inner d block orbital 3d electrons unpaired electrons in the orbital are responsible for colors these electrons are excited by the quanta of energy available in the visible spectrum which leads to absorption of a certain part of spectrum it is not just the presence of elements which affects color but much more important factor is how they are affected by the local structural configuration like type of coordination its asymmetry and distortion due to polarization bond type as well as interaction with neighboring cations and anions these effects together are known as crystal field or ligand field even less than 0.1% of such elements would be enough to produce appreciable perception of color of all the color causing elements chromium produces gorgeous colors in many minerals iron is however the most common color causing element surprisingly cobalt that provides brilliant blue to certain synthetic minerals like glass and spinel is not observed in most natural minerals only a few colored cobalt minerals are known in nature example pink colored rosalite and sphero cobaltite certain rare earth elements possessing incompletely filled 4f shells neodymium and dysprosium in yellow sapphire and synthetic yellow aluminum garnet and 5f shells of uranium and zircon cause color in crystals interestingly a spinel chromophoric element can produce different colors in various minerals chromium that has three unpaired electrons in the d orbital results in fabulous red colors in corundum ruby and enchanting green color in beryl or emerald absorption of green yellow and violet in ruby and red yellow and violet in emerald depends on the location of the chromium in the crystal structure that is the nature and arrangement of other ions that surround chromium 3 plus and replaces aluminum 3 plus which has an octahedral coordination with oxygen ions in the case of diamond it is not the transition element which gives color but elements like nitrogen and boron which replace carbon are responsible for yellow green and blue colors respectively cleavage cleavage parting planes and fractures are the weak planes encountered in minerals along which they can break in gem minerals these weak planes diminish their quality they however help in identifying a stone in rough form and to guide in direction of cutting the tendency of a mineral to break into smooth surface along certain atomic planes having larger interplanar spacing is known as cleavage usually the quality of cleave is expressed as perfect good and pure for example feldspar having two sets of cleavage cleaves off more readily parallel to 001 than 010 and therefore the former is expressed as perfect cleavage and the later as good a mineral may have only one set of cleavage example sillimanite 010 cleavage and topaz 001 cleavage or may have more than one set than in pyroxenes with two sets of prismatic cleavage parting planes parting planes are similar to cleavage but they develop at the time of deformation that induces twinning these are nothing but composition planes of deformation twins and are essentially planes of structural weakness are parallel to certain crystallographic planes minerals possessing the property of cleavage may break into smooth surface when struck at any place by hammer but one with parting plane 
breaks only along the plane which already exists. Corundum lacks cleavage planes, which often characterized by parting planes developed parallel to 1011 and 0001 plane and can be detected between crossed polaroids. Fracture planes. Unlike cleavage and parting planes, fracture has no crystallographic control and can develop in any direction. Most minerals break with irregular surface, uneven fractures. A few, especially the cryptocrystalline and amorphous variety, usually yield more or less smooth surfaces, even fractures. Minerals like quartz, obsidian and glasses break with concentrically arranged curved lines, conchoidal fractures. Bladed and fibrous minerals generally break into splinters, splintery fractures, and the broken surface, right angles to the length, appears like a broken part of a bone. Hackley fracture is typical of native metals. Fractures can develop spontaneously in some minerals due to several reasons. As in opal and amber, water content may evaporate, resulting in shrinkage and cracking. It is called crazing. Dark cracked halos are often seen around inclusions which contain radioactive elements. Such cracked halos are seen in some Sri Lankan sapphires and orison garnets. The internal stress around an inclusion in a mineral can also cause spontaneous fracturing. Hardness Resistance offered by the mineral to scratch is called hardness. Hardness and tenacity are dependent on the nature of bonding and cohesiveness. Polymorphic carbon is a classical example for hardness controlled by the nature of bonding. Diamond owes its superior hardness to the homodesmic nature of bonding, where carbon atoms are linked with their neighbors uniformly at a distance of 1.54 angstrom units. In graphite, the bonding length is 1.42 angstrom units, while at right angles to it, the distance is 3.35 angstrom units and the nature of bonding is weak. Thus, nature of bonding has kept both these polymorphic minerals at the extreme end in the scale of hardness. Minerals composed of smaller atoms or ions are harder, example diamond, than those containing larger ions, example gypsum. Metallic bonding makes native metals tough. Similarly, the interlocking texture of fibrous and granular aggregates as in jade and chalcedony results in toughness, although their hardness is only 6.5 to 7. Hardness and toughness have great implications in the field of lapidary. Hardness is studied in two ways, relative hardness, quantitative hardness. Both these hardnesses are based on scattering of one substance over the other, scratch hardness. In relative hardness, diamond point is used, while in quantitative hardness, any mineral with a known hardness is used to scratch the other. For example, of these substances A, B and C, if A can scratch B but not C, the hardness of A is greater than B but less than C and obviously C can scratch both A and B to scratch the other two. For determining quantitative hardness, a diamond point pressed at a known pressure is used as the indentation tester on smooth surface of a mineral. Depth of scratch mark or the bite obviously depends on the hardness of the material. Mohs scale. Hardness of minerals was established by Australian mineralogist Friedrich Moe in 1824 to test the relative hardness. Scratch test has to be carried out with great caution. Often, the so-called scratch mark could be the powder of the substance taken for scratching. So, after firm scratches, Surface of the mineral has to be washed and observed under a lens to confirm the scratch. The 10 minerals in increasing hardness described in most scale of hardness are talc, gypsum, calcite, fluorite, apatite, orthoclase, quartz, topaz, corundum, diamond. 
difference in hardness between minerals 1 to 7 is not so great as between 8 and 10. Hardness of topaz and corundum is considerably higher than that of diamond. Precise figure of hardness cannot therefore be given in most scale. For example, chrysoberyl can scratch quartz, but not corundum. Hardness is expressed simply as 8.5. Hence, for a rapid determination of hardness, this scale is used. Hardness testing and hardness pencils. A set of hardness pencils having their tips embedded with a mineral of known hardness is commercially available. Usually, the set consists of H6, H7, H7.5, H8, H8.5, H9 and H10. For testing, they are used from H10 downward but not in the ascending order. As far as possible, this test should be avoided. Although diamond is the hardest substance, it is brittle and cleavable. The tip of pavilion may chip off if the scratch test is carelessly executed. Common objects used for testing hardness are fingernail, H2.5, penknife, H5.5, window glass, H5.5, and steel file, 6.5. One can have his own set of pieces of orthoclase, quartz, topaz, and corundum with sharp edge or point. Polished plates of these minerals are useful to receive scratches from cut stones. In this case, the scratching has to be started from a mineral of lower hardness to that of higher. Polished plates of inexpensive synthetic corundum is useful to test diamond, H10, and boron carbide, H9.5, and carborundum, SIC, silicon carbide, H9.25, have hardness above 9, bromilite, BO, H9, and chrysoberyl, H8.5, follow corundum in hardness. Quantitative hardness. This is carried out with the help of Noob scale and rosy wall scale. According to this scale, the hardness of topaz is 175, corundum is 1000, and diamond is 1,40,000. The Noob scale and rosy wall scale is also used for determining the hardness of metals and ceramics. Directional hardness. Although diamond is the hardest substance, there is considerable variation in hardness from direction to direction. It is relatively softer along planes of a cube and hardest parallel to octahedral faces. Cutting and polishing is easier parallel to crystallographic directions. Polishing an octahedral face is extremely difficult. A twinned diamond is difficult to cut as the directions oppose on each other on cutting. Cryptocrystalline material like carbonado, jade and chalcedony are tougher as the planes of individual grains do not extend continuously. Kyanite and calcite are two other minerals having conspicuous directional hardness. Parallel to the lengths, kyanite has a hardness of less than 5 and along the width it is 7. In calcite, the hardness is 2 parallel to 0001 while in other direction it is 3. Abrasional hardness. By observing amount of abrasion that a stone has undergone during transportation, its relative hardness can be known. To test the abrasive strength, various minerals of known weight can be dumped in a drum and tumbled for a particular period and weighed subsequently. Pure and flawless diamond with all its extended forms, edges and solid angles is preserved even after prolonged tumbling. Most other minerals show various other degrees of roundness and very soft one will disappear. Although flawed diamond, however, cannot withstand prolonged abrasion. Lapidary hardness. One who cuts gemstones experiences apparent lapidary hardness, HL, sometimes higher or lower than the most scale of hardness, HM. There is a marked difference in hardness of some minerals like Benitoite, HM 6 to 6.5, HL 5. HM is most scale of hardness, HL is lapidary hardness. Periclase, HM 6, HL 7.5, and Zoicite, 
एच एम सिक्स टू सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एच एल फोर टू फोर पॉइंट फाइव एच एल लैपिडरी हार्डनेस इज सम वॉट लोअर इन बेरिल स्पिनाल एंड टोपास एंड इट इज हायर इन ब्रेजिलिनेट पेटेलाइट सिंहलाइट एंड जिरकॉन इन मोस्ट अदर केसेस हवेवर एच एम एंड एच एल आर ऑलमोस्ट सेम कॉरुंडम इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ हार्ड स्टोन बाय द लैपिडरी इन रोजी वॉल स्केल कटिंग वैल्यू फॉर कॉरुंडम इज वन थाउजेंड टाइम्स अगेंस्ट टोपैज स्टोन अदर देन कॉरुंडम आर कंसिडर्ड सॉफ्ट डायमंड ऑफकोर्स इज एंटायरली डिफरेंट इट कैन बी पॉलिश्ड ओनली बाय डायमंड डस्ट इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ हार्डनेस हार्ड द सब्सटेंस बेटर द पॉलिश इट टेक्स डिस्प्लेइंग ग्रेटर लस्टर thus diamond and corundum appear more lustrous it is very difficult to polish a softer stone despite high refractive index rutile refractive index 2.75 h 6 to 6.5 and sphene refractive index 1.96 h 5 to 5.5 does not appear very impressive in faceted form because of the interior polish they take Based on this aspect some vendors perform a crude test to distinguish ruby and sapphires from other stones by sliding a cut stone between their fingers the feel of polished corundum is smoother than a stone of inferior hardness tenacity and toughness tenacity is the cohesiveness of atoms in a mineral that is the resistance offered by a mineral to breaking crushing bending or tearing most minerals like quartz and diamond get powdered when crushed brittle some like talc and gypsum can be cut into slices by using a knife sectile metallic minerals can be hammered can be made into thin sheets malleable and also can be ductile drawn into wires a few minerals like talc and mica can be bent flexible by applying pressure when pressure is released some of them return to the original shape elastic while some do not talc is flexible whereas mica is both flexible and elastic specific gravity density refers to the mass per unit volume specific gravity is the relative density weight of substance divided by the weight of an equal volume of water in cgs units density is grams per centimeter cubed and since water has a density of 1 gram per centimeter cubed specific gravity would have the same numerical value has density but no units specific gravity is often a very diagnostic property for those minerals that have high specific gravities in general a mineral with higher atomic number cations has higher specific gravity One of the important physical properties which assist in identifying a mineral is specific gravity. Specific gravity is the weight of the substance compared to the equal volume of water at 4 degrees centigrade. Specific gravity is directly related to the molecular weight of the elements present and on how densely they are packed. The pure form of a mineral has a definite specific gravity which could vary when the preparation of the constituent element has been replaced by other elements in solid solution and inclusions are present an individual variety belonging to a particular solid solution series such as a chrysolite in olivine series specific gravity depends on the presence of the different end members present specific gravity of the varieties of such series can be expressed in a linear diagram thus when specific gravity of such varieties is determined the proportion of end members can be known or vice versa in polymorphic minerals despite identical composition the structure or nature of packing of atoms differs resulting in variation in specific gravity for example al2sio5 polymorphs that is andalusite 3.16 siliminite 3.23 and kyanite 3.55 specific gravity of minerals can be determined accurately by hydrostatic method for rapid determination certain heavy liquids are used 
the approximate specific gravity of a proportionately cut gemstone is determined by using certain gauges. Determination of specific gravity by using the hydrostatic method is based on the Archimedes discovery that a substance immersed in water replaces equal amount of water. Distilled water is preferred to ordinary tap water because of two reasons. The specific gravity of pure water at 4 degrees centigrade is equivalent to 1. It is free from air bubbles. A simple but accurate mechanical balance is used for this purpose. To start with, the specimen is weighed in air and then its weight is taken by immersing it in water. The difference between these two readings provide the loss in weight which is equivalent to the amount of water displaced by the substance or its volume. The specific gravity equals weight in air divided by its volume. Larger sample can be hanged by tying it using a single filament of nylon string that avoids absorption of water by capillary action. Smaller cut stones can be hung in a spirally coiled thin metal string. Water is taken in a beaker placed on a small bench which in turn is kept on the pan of the balance. Care should be taken to see that the bench as well as beaker does not touch any part of the balance. Before the sample is suspended in water, it is wetted to avoid possible formation of bubbles. Reed 1980 recommends a drop of detergent added to water to avoid the effect of surface tension. He also recommends suspending another identical coiled string in the opposite pan as a counterpoise. A beam balance is useful to weigh large samples. Samples weighing in kilograms require much bigger scales. Eureka can or beaker can be used to determine water displaced by layer samples. Heavy liquids. For a rapid determination of specific gravity, in distinguishing yellow sapphire from citrine or blue sapphire from iolite, certain heavy liquids are helpful. Bromoform, specific gravity 2.89, is a readily available liquid for geologists. When stones are dropped into bromoform, sapphires, specific gravity equal to 4, rapidly sink, while the other two float, specific gravity 2.65. Other commonly used liquids are methylene iodide, specific gravity is 3.33, and cleric solution, thallium malonate and thallium formate in water, specific gravity 4.15. Specific gravity of bromoform and methylene iodide can be reduced by adding toluene, specific gravity 0.865, or acetone, specific gravity 0.792. Water can dilute cleric solution. It is advisable not to mix two heavy liquids as the mixture turns black. Heavy liquids are stored in amber colored bottles so get darkened. Most heavy liquids are corrosive and their fumes are harmful to the eyes. Cleric solution especially is extremely dangerous and poisonous. Although bromoform is commonly used as heavy liquid, it is hazardous to health. Alternatively, non-toxic sodium polytungstate, also known as sodium metatungstate, 3Na2WO4, 9WO4, specific gravity 2.820 dissolved in water is recommended and the specific gravity of the liquid can be taken up to 3.10. A set of labeled bottles containing heavy liquids reduced to required specific gravity is handy in rapid determination. Standard indicators can be kept in liquid to check the specific gravity. Example, SG 4.0 indicator is corundum. Although the specific gravity test offers an important tool in identifying a gemstone, four factors have to be borne in mind. Minerals are capable of possessing other elements in solid solution and hence the specific gravity can deviate from the normal value to a certain extent. Example. Depending on the impurity, specific gravity of tourmaline can vary between 3 and 3.2. Specific gravity of intermediate members in a solid solution series depends on relative proportion of end members. Example, olivine. There can be more than one stone having the same specific gravity. 
एग्जाम्पल डायमंड इज थ्री पॉइंट फाइव टू स्वीन एंड स्पिनल स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव जीरो टू थ्री पॉइंट फाइव फोर प्रेजेंस ऑफ इंक्लूजन कैन ऑल्टर दिस स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी देयर फॉर स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी टेस्ट हैज टू बी सप्लीमेंटेड बाई अदर कन्फर्मेटरी टेस्ट अदर प्रॉपर्टीज अदर प्रॉपर्टीज दैट मे बी डायग्नोस्टिक इंक्लूड ओपालसेंस इरेडिसेंस केटो एनसी एस्टरिज्म प्ले ऑफ कलर्स फ्लोरसेंस एंड फॉस्फोरसेंस मैग्नेटिज्म पीजो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड टेस्ट फेमिलराइज योर सेल्फ विद द मीनिंग्स ऑफ दीज टर्म्स एंड वॉच फॉर दीज प्रॉपर्टीज एज यू एग्जाम इन मिनरल्स ओपालसेंस इन सर्टन ओपाल्स स्कैटरिंग ऑफ लाइट फ्रॉम माइन्यूट इंक्लूजन प्रोड्यूस अ ब्लूइश टू मिल्की वाइट इरेडिसेंस which effect is often called opalescence the lack of regularity of layers of exsolution lamella would also produce opalescence different terms adularescence feldspars are often used to describe various types of iridescence in these cases minerals are nearly opaque and iridescence is seen only by few layers in the upper surface iridescence Color in gem minerals can also be caused due to physical optical effect such as iridescence and dispersion. The phenomenon of iridescence can be best explained by a thin film of oil on water or a soap bubble. Reflection from the inner and outer surface of thin film interfaces with each other, resulting in extinguishing certain components of visible spectrum that are out of phase and enhancement of the other components that are in phase. the color ultimately obtained is one of the components that overlaps with a difference of one full wavelength or multiples of it depending on the thickness of the film resultant color varies from one part to the other in a wedge shaped film the color varies the first order interference color at the thinner part to higher order color in the thicker part newton's color rings thin film formed due to tarnish in metallic ores bornite or peacock ore or surface coating of weather transparent material over other substance produce such interference colors all these colors give rise to surface iridescence thin film of air in fractures or cleavage gap of mineral also produces iridescence iris quartz and rainbow quartz asterism inclusions oriented in two directions produce four rayed star alignments in three directions result in a six rayed star which property is referred to as asterism diopside produces four rayed stars while some corundum and rose quartz are good examples of display of, of six rayed stars in the case of spherical cut isometric minerals asterism is manifested at several spots in pyroxenes it is produced by the exsolved magnetite platelets while in corundum garnet and rose quartz it is due to rutile needles asterism may also be due to sillimanite fibers as in some rose quartz and sphen as in the case of spinel occasionally orthoclase feldspar display four rayed stars on account of ex solution of albite lamellae in two directions at right angles to each other some specimens of corundum may exhibit 12 rayed star with alternate prominent and diffuse lines due to oriented outline needles in 1120 and hematite platelets in 1010 planes double star effects wherein two six rayed stars side by side are observed in polysynthetically twinned corundum with rutile needles the term epiasterism is used to describe asterism in reflected light when the star is produced by transmitted light it is called diasterism asterism is not observed only in stones cut into cabocon it can also be observed in star producing stones in two ways by holding the stone very close to the eye and illuminating the stone from behind by a collimated beam of light big images of star can be projected onto the screen catoency optical effect produced by light reflected from below surface from thin layers of aragonite in pearl 
or inclusions of rutile in ruby is often referred to as sheen. When such optical effect is created by regularly oriented needle like inclusions or tubular cavities, it is referred to as silk. Such a specimen throw a narrow beam of bright light at right angles to the orientation of needles or cavities when cut into cabocon. This effect is known as catoency. The cause for catoency is due to the scattering of light by linear cylindrical bodies and its refraction by curved surface. The bright line moves as stone is turned. Since it resembles the eye of a cat, it is also referred to as cat's eye and is seen in silimonite, tourmaline, beryl, diopside, epidote, apatite, scapolite, tremolite, tiger's eye and certain moonstones. In cymophane, catoyant variety of chrysoberyl, the effect is due to tubular cavities and siliminite fibers and in tiger's eye, the effect is created by the alignment of asbestos fiber. Play of colors. Interference of light reflected from the surface or from within a mineral may cause the color of the mineral to change as the angle of incident light changes. This sometimes gives the mineral an iridescent quality. Minerals that show this include bornite, CO5, FES4, hematite, Fe2O3, sphalerite, ZNS, and some specimens of labradorite, plagioclase. Fluorescence and phosphorescence. Minerals that light up when exposed to ultraviolet light, X-rays, or cathode rays are called fluorescent. If the emission of light continues after the light is cut off, they are said to be phosphorescent. Some specimens of the same mineral show fluorescence while others don't. For example, some crystals of fluorite CaF2 show fluorescence and others do not. Other minerals show fluorescence frequently but not always. These include skelite, willemite, calcite, scapolite and diamond. Magnetism Magnetic minerals result from properties that are specific to a number of elements. Minerals that do not have these elements and thus have no magnetism are called diamagnetic. Examples of diamagnetic minerals are quartz, plagioclase, calcite and apatite. Elements like titanium, chromium, vanadium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel and copper can sometimes result in magnetism. Minerals that contain these elements may be weakly magnetic and can be separated from each other by their various degrees of magnetic susceptibility. These are called paramagnetic minerals. Paramagnetic minerals only show magnetic properties when subjected to an external magnetic field. When the magnetic field is removed, the minerals have no magnetism. Ferromagnetic minerals have permanent magnetism if the temperature is below the Curie temperature. These materials will become magnetized when placed in a magnetic field and will remain magnetic after the external field is removed. Examples of such minerals are magnetite, hematite ilmenite solid solutions, Fe2O3, FeTiO3 and pyrotite. Conclusion Minerals can be identified with the help of physical properties. The properties also help not only to identify the minerals, but also to distinguish them from other minerals, including the synthesized counterparts. The commercial values of the minerals are also determined based on these properties.